wanted to let everybody know that we do have her book for sale out in the hallway, and that after the lecture's over, she'll be available for at least a few minutes to sign them over here. But we'll take about 20, 25 minutes of questions now. So, okay. Um, there's one right there in the back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dr. Alexander, thank you so much for uh, your ins inspiring uh, work. May God bless you and keep you for uh, what you have done and peeling back the onion is truly amazing. Uh, my question is, uh, have you looked at uh, the gun business in the United States and how it affects the overall thesis of what you are speaking about? Actually, I have not done a lot of research on um, the gun industry in the United States. I've, I've read and seen you know, pieces of research um, about it, but no, I'm definitely not an expert on it, although you know, I, I just saw recently a study about you know, a handful of gun manufacturers that were responsible for selling guns that led to an you know, extraordinary percentage of, of violent crimes in particular urban areas, and you know, there has been a lot of work Show, that has shown that uh, the availability and easy access to guns in the United States is you know, a large contributor to the rates of violent crime that we see here in the United States as compared to other countries that have far more restrictive gun laws. But I, I haven't done a lot of specific research in that area. So I wanted to preface uh, my question, which might seem really pointed, by saying I very much so support uh, a movement uh, to end mass incarceration, and I think the current system is really unjust. I agree entirely. But uh, my question really is, you know, the basis kind of of what you're saying about how there's a discriminatory policy in uh, profiling, say, blacks, and that in fact the drug use and sale is equivalent or even disproportionately more so uh, use and, and distribution by whites, perhaps. And I was reading your book, and I saw the end note was noting, I think that was from surveys that were maybe, pe uh, would you remind me, Pew Center or, but it, is that right? Yeah, one of the studies I cited was by, conducted by the I Pew remember Center. it was. There was a bunch of was, different studies. It was a studies. lot, but it seemed as though, and I didn't <laughs> investigate them. I haven't finished the book, so don't hold it against me. But um, was it not self-reported? Yeah, the, most of the surveys that have been done have been self-reporting because there isn't really any other way to study drug use and sales other than self-reported surveys. However, what's remarkable, I think, is how consistent the results have been over time and that much of the changes you know when they happen over time seem to mirror quite well um, you know changes in you know uh, admissions to hospitals and that sort of thing so for example you know when there have been higher self reports regarding crack use and abuse there have also been higher you know admissions rates that mirror the um, you know, self-reporting rates along racial lines. And so there is corroborating um, evidence that isn't purely based in, you know, self-reports that have, you know, supported those studies over time. And I don't want to hog the mic, but the, the next part of the question or something to share, maybe we can reflect on it some, is, well, when you were mentioning, say, how reticent people are to admit maybe particularly in communities that have been traditionally discriminated against, that they have been felons or gone through a criminal uh, encounter, say. And maybe perhaps coming from a privileged, you know, skin color class, uh, your readiness to admit that you've engaged in something criminal might differ between these two, these two groups. So I, I would proposition that there's a possibility that blacks uh, would be more reluctant to say I have sold drugs and maybe whites sitting in their privileged position saying I don't have so much to lose by admitting this no one's going to hold me as accountable will be more willing to admit that's just something that I was considering does that make sense 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible, although, you know, the surveys are, are done anonymously um, so that, you know, it's not going to accrue to anyone's benefit or harm if they admit or, or deny um, in these surveys. And, you know, I also have to say that based on my own personal experience, you know, I've attended a lot of different schools and lived in a lot of different communities and I would say that in you know, my own personal experience, drug dealing has been at least as prevalent. Um, you know, when I was at Vanderbilt University, there was drug dealing that was open and notorious among whites, but those who were selling drugs didn't think of themselves as drug dealers. They thought themselves as, I got something if you want it, you know. Um, and students didn't think of them as, you know, oh, that's Mark, the drug dealer. They thought of, oh, hey, if you need something, go talk to Mark. Um, and so I think there's a way in which um, white criminality becomes invisible um, because we, you know, tend not to think of whites committing the same kinds of crimes or activities as criminals, whereas um, the kid standing on the street corner is easily interpreted in our mind as a criminal, as a drug dealer. Um, so, you know, I could say that it isn't hard for me to believe that the rates of drug dealing and drug use are roughly similar um, across racial groups. And in fact, much of the research that's been done has indicated that drug markets, much like American society generally, are fairly segregated by race. Um, you know, blacks tend to sell to blacks, whites tend to sell to whites. Um, Barry McCafferty, one of the former drug czars, you know, kind of once talked about the fact that you know, if your child bought drugs, it was from someone of their own race, um, generally. That this idea that everybody drives to the hood to get their marijuana or their meth or whatever, you know, it just isn't based in, in reality. And um, so there's a tremendous amount of drug dealing that happens um, within communities of all colors and within class, uh, cl class all different types of, of classes as well.